Our next session is going to be on cmakepresets.json. If you have any questions about the previous session, Daniela will still be in chat to answer them, so keep those coming. We're going to move on now to Erica and Kyle, who are going to tell us about this new feature of CMake. How are you both doing? Good. Good, thanks. All right, I'll handle it straight over to you. Thank you so much. Sounds good. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica. I work at Microsoft on the C++ team, where I focus on tooling for C++ cross-platform developers. And I'm joined today by Kyle Edwards. Hi, now, if you my, name is, my name is Kyle. I work at Kitware. I am one of the co-maintainers of the CMake build system. I have contributed dozens of features to CMake, including the one that we're going to be discussing today, cmakepresets.json. All right, so, so what is CMake presets? So this is a file that you put in the root of your project that specifies a set of common settings that you might want to apply when you're running CMake configure and build and test. Um, so it'll let you specify things like cache variables and the generator and any other build flags that you might want. Um, the, we started off with configure presets, which just set cache variables in the generator and whatnot. And then we also added build presets, which let you select which targets to build, and as well as test presets, which um, let you select which tests to run and which configuration. And how did we end up with CMake presets? So this started off, um, the Minecraft team at Mojang um, asked us to create a system for um, doing this kind of common setting things from the CMake GUI. So we started off by attempting to replicate CMake settings.json from Visual Studio and from VS Code, but we ran into some issues with it. There were a lot of settings in that that were specific to Visual Studio, and there were some things that we thought about the overall structure of the file that we, could be improved. So we decided to, yeah, oh, yep, go ahead. Uh, and at the same time, our team at Microsoft was aware of some of these limitations of CMake settings, and we were looking to address them as well. So when we learned about Kitware's efforts, we were able to share our goals and ended up collaborating together to come up with this new file format. Yep. So why should you use CMake presets, and how is it different from other CMake configuration files? So CMake actually supports two files that are both that both live at the root of your repository. They're cmakepresets.json, which is intended to save project-wide settings and be checked into source control. And there's also cmakeuserpresets.json, which is intended to save user-specific settings and be excluded from source control. This ensures that project-wide settings can always be checked in and shared between team members, which makes it easier for new team members to get up and running, and also makes it easier to synchronize changes to your CMake and build invocations across the entire team. Like CMake itself, CMake presets is cross-platform, so you can use the same CMake presets file to invoke CMake on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And CMake presets can also help streamline build instructions for open source CMake projects because you can pull down any CMake project that has a CMake presets at the root of the repository and configure it, build it, and test it locally using the instructions encoded in a preset file. And to help illustrate this a bit more, we're going to dive into an example starting with configure presets that were added to CMake in CMake 319. Yes. So the configure presets let you specify things like the generator that it gets used. For example, uh, the Ninja generator or Ninja multi-config or any of the various Visual Studio generators. And it lets you specify things like the architecture and cache variables. So we'll go through this line by line. So these first two lines, name and description. Name is just an identifier. Description is just a user-friendly description of what the thing is. Um, and then we have generator, which uh, in this case, it'll generate a solution file for Visual Studio 2019. But you can also generate Ninja files and make files and Xcode projects. Um, inheritance, this is a little feature of the presets where if you have several presets that share a lot of common settings and you just want to change one or two things between them, then you can have them both inherit from a common preset that will contain all of those common settings. Um, 
this is uh, the architecture. So um, for Visual Studio, this sets uh, whether you're building for x86 or 64-bit or ARM or anything else. Um, and then we have cache variables. In this case, we're just setting the C and C++ compiler, but anything else that you would set with the dash D flag on the CMA command line can be set in this cache variables entry. Yep, and all of the command line options that you can pass to CMake from the command line map directly to an option in the uh, configure preset object. And there's also build and test presets, which were added in CMake 320. Kyle, do you want to yeah, run yeah. through build and test? Yeah, sure. Cool. Um, so uh, this will, for the build presets, you can specify a configuration. So for if you have a multi-config generator like Ninja Multi-Config or Visual Studio, then you can set it to the debug or release configuration. You can also specify a list of targets that you want to build and uh, a parallel level and any other options that are available with dash dash build. Um, and for the test presets, you can also specify the configuration and a regex of which tests you want to run and any other settings that are available on the C test command line, you can put in a test preset as well. All right. So, so far we've been discussing how you can invoke CMake using CMake presets directly. So from the command line or maybe in a CI pipeline, but on our end, we also added support for CMake presets in both Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. And support for CMake presets in both of these products is available now in preview. So for Visual Studio, that's 1610 preview too. And for the CMake tools extension and VS Code, that's version 1.7 of the extension. Because the same file, cmakepresets.json, is used to drive CMake configure, build, and test, that means you can hop between Visual Studio and VS Code and leverage the full feature set of both products without having to do any additional project configuration. Because CMake Presets is supported by CMake itself, this also means that it's seamless to reproduce the builds created or driven by VS and VS Code from the command line or in a CI pipeline. So the configure and build command lines that are constructed by Visual Studio and VS Code are the same CMIC command lines that will be generated by CMIC itself. Finally, CMIC presets does allow for some vendor specific options that live in a vendor map. We do use this for things like IntelliSense options or the Visual Studio remote settings, but these settings don't impact the construction of the CMIC command line at all. They are ignored by CMIC and they are only evaluated by Visual Studio and Visual Studio code and are used to drive IDE specific integration settings. So with that, I'm going to hop into a quick demo where I run through how to use CMake presets from the command line in Visual Studio, in VS Code, and with the CMake GUI. So I'll start with the command line workflow. So here I have a terminal open. I'm working at the root of a CMake project. It's bullet three. It's an open source physics library. And I have a CMake presets file at the root of that repository. In this demo, I'm only using cmakepresets.json, but if I was using cmakeuserpresets.json, then that would live in this directory as well. I am using cmake320 because that's when support for build and test presets was added. This list presets command uh, lists the union of configure, build, and test presets defined in CMake presets and CMake user presets. And to invoke configure with CMake presets, all I need to do is pass the dash dash preset option and then the name of the configure preset that I want to use. So in this case, I'm configuring the project with x86 Windows configure preset. And while this is running, I'm going to quickly open Visual Studio just to kind of walk through how I've set up this preset. So as Kyle mentioned, presets allow for inheritance. So I have a base configure preset, which is one configure preset in this array of configure presets that sets some common configure settings that I want to apply to all of my configure presets. 
And then I have this x86 Windows configure preset that inherits from base and sets in a, a few additional settings, like in this case, my target architecture, which maps to dash A. Looks like this is still running. Sharing my screen with SteamYard does slow things down quite a bit for me, so bear with me as we work through these examples. Um, but I can chat a bit more about this file. So I have an x86 Windows configure preset. I also have a few configure presets that are specific to Linux. So they specify a, a GNU tool set and um, a couple other settings. I also have an array of build presets, which as Kyle mentioned, are used to specify build settings or any command line arguments that you would pass to CMake after dash dash build from the command line. So that's things like verbose build, clean build, any native build tool options, things like that. All right, looks like this is still running. Um, I can also hop on over to the CMake GUI. So um, this is a application that is maintained by Kitware and it's used to inspect and modify CMake cache variables. So, and sorry, I know this is a bit small. Um, I'm just gonna quickly run through this. So you tell CMake GUI where your source code is. So this is the same directory that I have open from the command line right now. Um, and then you would select your preset and I can't do that quite yet because configuration is still running here. Um, and I can fail on this in a few seconds if it's still running, but it really slows down my machine. Um, here I have the same file open in VS Code. Um, so you can use it from, from any environment. So is it possible that I take a few questions while this is still running? Oh, okay, because it's kind of necessary for the rest of the demo. All right, it's almost done. Okay, that is finished. Um, so I'm gonna hop on over to VS Code really quickly and just show you how you would use the same CMake presets file in VS Code. Um, so this blue bar across the bottom of VS Code shows the status of my environment. So in this case, it's showing my active configure preset. So um, this x86 Windows configure preset, and you can change that by either clicking on that icon or running the CMake select configure preset command. Likewise, you can select your active build, build preset and test preset using the CMake select build preset and test preset commands. And those are also shown across the bottom of this blue bar in VS Code. Um, so the same configure and build actions that I can take from the command line, I can take from inside VS Code as well. Um, we don't have to sit through this, but to quickly show how you would build from the command line, you can run cmake dash dash build dash dash preset and then the name of a build preset. Um, so this basic example GUI build preset, I, in this preset what I've done is I've used the targets option, which is equivalent to passing dash dash targets or dash T from the command line. And it can be used to specify a subset of targets in your entire project that you want CMake to build. So this is just building one, one target. Um, and now we can go back to the CMake GUI because a uh, generation has finished. But basically what you can do is you can select your active configure preset. So for me, that's gonna be x86 Windows. The active configure preset drives the build directory. Um, and then when I click configure, that basically generates the CMake cache such that I can inspect all the CMake variables that are set in my cache and modify them. And so this includes a few uh, cache var CMake variables that I've set in my preset file. So in my case, that's like CMake install prefix, which is the install directory, and my C++ compiler, which is CL, things like that. All right. And the last thing that I want to show as a part of this demo is the CMake preset support in Visual Studio. So you can use all this in VS Code in conjunction with remote extensions on Windows, Linux, and Mac because VS Code is cross-platform itself. 
but you can also use CMake presets in Visual Studio. So I could configure and build using the same x86 Windows configure preset that I was just showing from the command line. But in this case, I'm actually going to configure and build on WSL. So you'll notice that there are three dropdowns across the top of my screen here in the menu bar. The dropdown on the left is my active target system. And this is the system where CMake will be invoked to configure the project and build. So I could use my local machine. I can use a remote system that's connected over SSH, or I can use any WSL installation that Visual Studio picks up on. The dropdown in the middle uh, indicates my active configure preset and the dropdown on the right indicates my active build preset. And I've already configured and built this, so I can go ahead and start debugging one target. I'm gonna use this app basic example. Um, so this will, what is happening right now is that this target is launched on WSL using the front end of the Visual Studio debugger backed by GDB. So I'm debugging with GDB from Visual Studio, but I can leverage the same uh, debugging feature set that you're used to when debugging on Windows. So I can step through my program. I can inspect variables on hover. I have my autos and locals windows, a nice visual call stack, things like that. The last thing that I wanted to call out is that in both Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, we've added IntelliSense for configure presets, build presets, and test presets. So you'll get uh, auto complete suggestions based on the options that are supported by Kitware, by CMake itself, um, as well as any vendor, Microsoft vendor objects that are supported. And with that, I'm gonna hop on over back to my deck. Um, so that was a really quick run through of how these things are supported from the command line, from the CMake GUI, VS and VS Code, but there's a lot more there. So for more information, I would recommend checking out the CMake presets documentation, which is maintained by CMake and describes all the options that are supported by configure, build and test presets. And then for more integration, uh, more information on the integration in both DS and VS Code, you can check out this announcement blog post, which links to our documentation, which contains more information on how to enable CMake presets integration. Again, both integrations are still in preview, but you can play around with them today, um, as well as more information on how to configure, build, and test your projects from a uh, IDE or editor. And that's all I have. Um, Kyle, feel free to jump in with more info. And otherwise, I think we're ready to take a few questions. Yeah, um, I do see a good question here. Uh, is JSON how you configure CMake these days didn't have its own domain-specific language? So the domain-specific language, the CMake list.txt, that has not changed. Um, and uh, the purpose of CMake presets is oftentimes you'll see people write shell scripts and batch files whose only purpose is to invoke CMake with a G flag and a set of D flags and anything else that they might want from that. CMake presets is intended to replace those ad hoc shell scripts. Um, so this is the JSON is just another thing that's on top of the CMake list.txt on top of the domain specific language. Cool, thanks for that. Yeah, I've got some some more questions in chat, which I'll relay to you. So one, a few of them have been answered by folks already, but um, maybe you could speak a bit more about the relationship between CMake settings.json and, and CMake presets. Right, so CMake presets is an orthogonal and recommended alternative to CMake settings. CMake settings is still supported, but there is full parity between CMake presets and CMake settings. So any command line that you're able to uh, generate or drive with CMake settings, you should also be able to drive with CMake presets. There are a couple of benefits of CMake presets over CMake settings. So one is that CMake presets is supported directly by CMake, which means that it's seamless to reproduce your builds from inside Visual Studio from the command line or in a continuous integration pipeline. There's nothing that's kind of abstracted by Visual Studio. Another is that CMake presets is cross-platform, which means that you can use the same file to drive your configure, build, and test invocations on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and not just on Windows. And a third one is that CMake presets is supported by both Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. 
So CMake Settings was only supported in Visual Studio, but CMake Presets is supported by both products, which means that you can hop between VS and VS Code um, without any additional configuration. So CMake Presets right now, the integration is still in preview, so totally understand if you want to stick with CMake Settings. But long term, looking forward, we're excited to support CMake Presets because it is supported directly by CMake and should make your lives and our lives easier in the future. And our hope is, and our hope is that other IDEs will take up CMake presets in the future as well. I know the uh, the JetBrains team was working on it. I'm hoping that eventually Cute Creator and CodeBlocks and Eclipse, um, we want all those to uh, integrate it as well. Great. And there's a, another question on CMake settings, which is about um, you could only generate a build system which had exactly one configuration, i.e. one for a release or one for a debug, uh, but not one build system with both release and debug configurations, even if you used a multi-configuration generator. So with CMake right. presets, can you describe multi-config generators properly so that so Visual Studio... Yeah, go, go so, so from the command line or in VS Code, you definitely can. CMake presets as a file does support multi-config generators. Um, multi-config support in Visual Studio uh, isn't quite fully supported. And so Visual Studio generators are supported, which are kind of multi-config in nature. Um, but for multi-config Ninja or other command line generators, in Visual Studio, we still do recommend that you like specify, configure, or release builds in the configure preset. Um, but that's something that we're aware of. Um, and if you're working again in VS Code or from the command line, multi-config generators are supported already. Great. Um, any other questions about CMake settings or anything else, drop them in chat. There is one other existing question on what is the effect of warnings dev level? Kyle, do you want to take that yes. one? Yes, sure. Um, so there's a distinction between user warnings and dev warnings. User warnings is for when the person who's invoking CMake uh, does something that CMake says that maybe they shouldn't do or that might cause problems. Dev warnings are for when there's an issue with the CMake lists itself that uh, is not the fault of the person who's invoking CMake, but whoever authored the script could potentially want to fix whatever issue is being warned about. Cool. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's all of the questions in here. There's some other questions about uh, VC package support. Um, maybe we can touch on that for the video. Um, is this going to support VC package other than just setting um, the CMake toolchain file? So CMake presets doesn't really integrate with VC package aside from specifying the CMake toolchain file. VC package integrates with CMake as a whole and picks up on your specified target architecture. That's how they know what triplet to build automatically. Um, and then separately, VC package is supported in Visual Studio. But there isn't really other integration points between CMake presets as a file and VC package as a tool, aside from where you would specify the VC package toolchain file as a command line argument as a part of that cache variables object. Um, so, but yeah, no integration, but there aren't really any integration points there. It would more be like the, the Visual Studio or the VS Code integration that would, that could would be more integration points. Right, and if you do want more information about VC package, then the very next session is going to be the one for you. <laughs> um, okay, so we're we're about clear clean on questions in chat. So does anyone have any others before we um, before we move on? Not seeing anything pop up. Okay. Thank you so much, both Erica and Kyle, for joining and telling us about uh, CMake presets. So uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.